Okay, so <clears throat> today I'm going to be showing you how to hook up your Spectra 2, 3, or 4 series camera. Now, I'm going to go over the different kinds of wires. I drew a nice little diagram here, so I don't have to put everything together. I don't have time for that, and it'll just take way too long. And I have the different types of wires here to show you and uh, what you're going to need to do. So, first of all, here's the Spectra. This is a Spectra 4. It's an indoor housing. And uh, I've just gone ahead and taken an old Spectra 3 uh, door assembly out to show you. Now, this is what's inside of the housing. This one's for a Spectra 3 series, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. And uh, these you can swap out of these housings over here. So, let's look at this first. On the back here, to open this with your finger, do not use a screwdriver. People use screwdrivers, and you put a screwgee on this, you're going to snap it right off. It's a little plastic clip, and it just comes open like that. And then you gently open your door assembly, and it's going to be obviously upside down, and you're going to seal it like that. When you're closing it, very important, your video wire, sideways, and down. It fits right over there. If you're using balance for a video over Cat5 or UTP, you're going to put it sideways and down so that you don't muck up anything in the back over there. This black thing is just a strap for the um, lower bubble. I take it off because it's really useless. I mean, uh, you only want to have that secured if it's way up high and you're going to be up on a uh, scissor lift or a ladder working on that. You don't want to worry about losing your bubble. So, on the back, um, we have obviously first the video, which is a BNC connector. Always secure this plastic shield over, because if that touches anything over here and you get a short, well, then you're just going to go ahead and fuck yourself over, because you fried your camera. You don't want that. So, this is our video over BNC. On a Spectre 3, if you want to use unshielded twisted pair, Cat5 cable, you're going to need um, a Balan or a Cat5 2 coax adapter, which looks like this. You can pick them up from China. They are very inexpensive. All you do is unscrew little terminals here. Pay attention to your positive and minus video and um, screw it on. See, it's even marked right here. It has a little positive and a minus. So, say you're using uh, some Cat5 over here and you're going to use green for video make sure that the white is going to be your positive so over here it's going to be positive and on the same end it's going to be positive otherwise you're not going to get video out now if you're working on a Spectre 4 there's an extra little terminal block here for video over UTP so you actually don't even need this and I would actually recommend using that so that you don't have like bulk and shit in here when you're trying to close it up so just use your little uh, video over UTP jack or terminal block it looks exactly the same as this Moving on to this one, this one is for power. Um, you can see this one has a little rust on it. I had to clean it up, but it still works good. You have three terminals. These two on the sides are your power. They're not polarized, so it doesn't matter which one you use for power positive or power negative. It really doesn't matter. Just don't use the middle one. The middle one is for ground. If you want, go ahead and ground it. It's always good to, but I've never really done that. So, power here, power there, it doesn't matter which one's negative or positive. Over here, we have the RS-485, your T+, plus, your T-, minus, your R-, minus, and your R+. Plus. Um, the ones you're most commonly going to be using are your uh, R+, plus and your R-, minus, Rx positive, Rx-, minus, because those are the receiving ends if you're using a um, RS-485 controller. That is also a two-wire system. Pay attention to positive and negative. So, for example, if you're going to be using brown for that, use the uh, brown and white one as your positive, and the solid brown as your negative, and make sure it's the same on the transmitting end as on the receiving end. Um, from your controller, um, you're going to be putting out T plus and T minus, and on your receiver, which is this, you're going to be putting it into the R plus and the R minus. So, uh, T to R and R to T, or vice versa. I can't remember how the hell to do it right now but you can figure that out. 
Um, the alarms and the relays, that's something that uh, is a whole other uh, story, I'm not going to get into that, I'll just briefly touch up on it. Um, as you see here, I have some devices. You can hook up um, alarms, which is exactly what they sound like, alarms, either a uh, bell, a siren, or any other kind of noise-making device, um, or a strobe light, if you want, combination of the two, I don't know. <coughs> and um, as relays, you can use door contact switches or um, PIR motion sensors. So, um, for example, say you hook it up to a door sensor. When that door opens and this uh, gets contact, the camera is going to turn to a specific preset and or uh, zoomed in position for a specified amount of time at your disclosure. Or if uh, motion is picked up, it will turn to that particular spot. Or if motion is detected or alarm goes off, uh, sorry, or if contact is open, the alarm will go off. Or if uh, someone spray paints your camera, or there's video loss and someone snips the cable, the alarm will go off. And uh, just all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm not sure if these are actually powering the device or this just acts as a switch. Uh, I think it does power it. Um, you can put an IR lamp uh, over there, so say at night um, there's that really dark corner or something and you want to be able to control an auxiliary device, you can do that through this. Um, over here there's this little port with this little cover on it. It doesn't do anything. This is for a translator board. This is just like a little dust plug, I guess, and it goes in there, it doesn't do anything. But you can put a board on here and it secures on here um, if you're using different types of controllers, like um, American Dynamics controllers with Manchester code and all kinds of stuff like that, so don't worry about that. Um, one thing to notice here is on the old ones, this is an older Spectra 3 uh, door assembly. You can see how they secure the video cable there, it's kind of like half soldered onto the board. Now it's just a little plug, um, which makes for better because these used to twist around and get all messed up. So that's about it. Um, this is called the door assembly, in case you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, because it's a door and it's assembled. Um, you can buy these separately, they're pretty pricey if you buy them retail. Um, <clears throat> over to the diagram that I made. To connect your camera, I highly recommend coaxitron, which is the control signals being transmitted through the, um, the video cable. Um, Here's your spectra. All the wa the connections coming out rather are up here, and I've broken them down into categories. So your video, you can either use coax or uh, Cat5, Cat5e, five, Cat6. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, your only major differences are uh, run length. So with Cat5, uh, I think you get about 700, 750 feet, and uh, with coax, you will get about a thousand feet of uh, of a run before you start to lose uh, video quality and voltage uh, through the video cable. Now, you connect your video either just to a monitor, to your DVR, then to your monitor, to your Matrix or Gen X uh, switcher, then to the DVR, then to the monitor. That's how it works. If you're using RS-45, um, you're going to have to connect those two wires. You're going to have to program the address of the camera, and whether you're using D version or P version, and uh, put that into the actual keyboard or into the control box, which the keyboard plugs into. I've never really worked with that, so... I'm not going to elaborate on it. Your power very simple, positive and negative. You can get a master panel, which has a bunch of outputs. And if you're going that route, I highly recommend a 20 amp unit. Because if you get a 10 amp unit and you're having multiple devices hooked onto that, um, you will lose voltage to the camera. And you're going to get into a situation what's called dirty power, when the camera is not receiving enough amperage. Not voltage, amperage. So it's not going to the messages aren't going to come through clear and it's just going to start spinning around or getting stuck and you're not going to know what the hell is going on and it's just going to be a confusion but now that I've told you and you get into that situation you will know that to check the power. If you have a uh, multimeter handy you can go ahead and check your, uh, your receiving output from the camera end at the other end of the wire so don't go and check power from the unit, uh, from the power supply unit because you're going to be getting good power you check on the other end um, and make sure you're getting good amperage. So I would recommend a 20 amp panel that can put out that extra bit of voltage to the uh, to the camera. Don't worry about frying the camera because there is a fuse 
right here that uh, will protect it. Always make sure that fuse is in there and that it works. Or that it's not burnt actually. And that's something to check if your power won't, if your camera will not power on. Um, over the alarms, you have to set that up as you wish. There's tons of ways and devices you can use. Either some sort of a contact, um, a noise-making siren device, or a uh, strobe light, or a door contact. Um, that's pretty much it. Power, video, control. Control was over the video cable if you're using Coaxtron, so you got that one all banged out. And um, that's about it. Oh, for connectors, as I mentioned, um, these are the uh, BNC connectors. BNC 2 Cat 5, they're called Balans. Balans, however the fuck you want to say it. Um, if you are using coax, you're going to have to get into this kind of shit over here, where you're going to have to actually strip and prep each coax cable which is a royal pain in the ass and then you're gonna have to either twist on one of these or if you have the crimp on ones you're gonna have to crimp them on and that's just you know it's it's not really not worth it I would just go with these these are cheaper than buying a whole bunch of these connectors as well as coax cable which is more expensive so use cat5 if you have cat6 five cat5 five e go for it it uh, it really doesn't matter you have your twisted pairs in here and you can you can run everything through there I mean you can use this one for video uh, these two for power and this one for a device or whatever um, oh yeah if you're using if you're using this for power I would highly recommend using one pair per polarity so this one will be positive and this one will be negative just so you get better uh, voltage distribution over the wires because the gauge of these wires is pretty thin and uh, you do not want them overheating anything like that. Um, you, I mean if you use coax you're gonna have to get a separate wire which is just some standard uh, standard copper wire like this maybe a little thicker gauge and uh, hook that up. So that's about it. Got any questions? Uh, feel free to let me know.